He in studio now is Reserves Brigadier General Amir Avivi. He is director of the Israel's Defense and Security uh, Forum, uh, which some in Israel call the Bitronis team, and also former deputy commander of the Gaza Strip Division. And of course, his group is behind that letter we've just been discussing. And uh, Amir, let me ask you then, what do you think it contributes already to, for example, the efforts being made by the Israeli government to the current Israeli military establishment against the Iran nuclear deal? I think it's very important that the American establishment and also the EU understands that the vast majority of officers, also those who are retired and in reserve, think that this agreement between the US, Europe and Iran is a disaster. It's a disaster for Israel, it's a disaster for the Middle East, and it's a, a disaster for the whole globe. And uh, I think that somebody needs to say the clear crystal truth about the meaning of this uh, of this deal i think the government uh, has more uh, constrictions they try to be more diplomatic uh, do you think they should be taking a more public approach like your group like that taken by former prime minister netanyahu yes and like the head of mossad the the, the only of high ranking official i heard speaking very very clearly right he called it a, a disaster last yes, week yes uh, and we we, are, we agree it is a disaster and uh, it paves the way of Iran in a few years to become a nuclear uh, country and the superpower. Basically, the agreement legally paves their way to enrich as much uranium as they want from 2031, which means that they will have the ability in a week or two to produce even 100 nuclear bombs. Now, this, this uh, will have repercussions because at the end of the day, all the countries in the Middle East will start a, a nuclear race. There will be proliferation. The Saudis already are trying to sign deals to uh, procure uh, nuclear capabilities. Other countries are thinking about development. They won't stay aside and let Iran be nuclear while they're, they are not. So this is changing the whole globe. Right. I mean, let's talk, though, it does look like, if reports are correct, the Biden administration and the EU are pushing ahead with this deal. Let's talk a little about the day after. Discussion now whether somehow the U.S. has to demonstrate that it could carry out, that it would pose a credible military threat if Iran should push beyond the, uh, the limits or the, the set in any, any deal. Is there some way that, that the U.S. or the West could do that in a way that could dissuade Iran from from, uh, for example, in a so-called breakout period, rush to a nuclear weapon? Well, as I said, first of all, the deal legally paves the way to be a nuclear power. So, you know, signing a deal and then saying, let's say, uh, prepare a military option while we agree that there will be nuclear, it, it doesn't make sense. Well, not nuclear still... weapon, though. But, uh, but... Yeah, but, you know, if they, can, if they can enrich endless amount of uranium, this means there will be a, a nuclear okay. superpower, okay? So, so it doesn't make sense. Now, if the deal is signed, obviously Israel will need to demand to get all the capabilities it needs in order to be able to defend itself by itself and take care of this uh, threat. And they also try to convince the, the U.S. Uh, that in, if there is a need, they should join in a military operation. I think this will be the only option left on the table. I, uh, it was uh, reported just uh, a few hours ago of the uh, Israel placing an order with Boeing for four giant refueling tankers to replenish the set. Is that an indication or sign the timing of this announcement? The government, in a sense, trying to say we're getting ready ourselves for the day after? Well, as you know, procurement, especially military procurement, is a very, very long process that I cannot see the connection between uh, this uh, signing and, and well, a connection maybe in the timing. Uh, yeah, as, it's, as, it's as happened a so. Not, as know. a statement, not as a practical yes, but measure. You know, you, you see what's happening here. Basically, uh, they are putting towards us a, a huge threat, and then saying, "Okay, maybe we'll give you some uh, toys to to deal with this threat." So maybe don't put the threat in front of us, and don't push, uh, don't give Iran billions to weaponize all the militias in the Middle East, because this is the first thing that will happen. Right. Once there is no sanctions, tens of billions of dollars will be used by the Iranians to 
We'll talk about that because we see, of course, as you're continuing, reportedly, it strikes in Syria. I mean, this will, will this mean an escalation of what Israel will have to do in theaters such as Syria, Lebanon, even perhaps places like Iraq? Well, the way I see it is the Iranians are building for a very long time uh, the, the ability to attack Israel. Now, if we accelerate this build-up, it might bring us in a year, two or three, uh, to a point where Iran will say, that, that's it, we are ready. We have enough uh, missiles, we have enough drones, we have enough rockets. Um, we managed to strengthen all these militias, and this is time to attack Israel from all fronts. So basically, this agreement, once sanctions will be relieved, if that will happen, right. will push the whole Middle East towards war. All right. Brigadier, Reserves Brigadier General Amir Vivi, thank you for joining us.